everyone, and welcome to part one of the series of videos on uh, creating an IdeaScript dialogue. So in this video, what I want you to do is I'm going to set up the basic template uh, for creating the, uh, the IdeaScript dialogue project. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the, the basic dialogue, add on some of our basic variables, uh, set up the dialogue function, and so on as our first steps. So since we're starting uh, something from scratch, uh, we can't actually use the history or anything like that. Unfortunately, uh, there's no actual easy ways to create the idea script dialogues except by actually opening up idea scripting environment and creating the dialogue. So let's just do that. So to do that, I'll just click on the idea script. That opens up the editor. Here we go. One sec. Okay, so this is the editor, so this is where we're going to be creating our project. First thing I want to do is I'm going to add in a few variables that I'm going to be using. And one thing I always do for all of my scripts is I always add in the option explicit. What the option explicit does is it makes sure that any variables I use have been defined by me. Uh, this way, if I make any type of typos or anything like that, it will catch those typos. It is a very good way to, to save time and save frustration because sometimes you might mistype a variable name and without the option explicit you wouldn't have to actually be able to realize that unless you go looking for the code and your results may be different from what you want. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to define some variables. In the previous video we saw that we needed, uh, we're going to be grabbing a file to use our uh, this uh, script on. Uh, we've we selected an amount field and also we've got the uh, actually the other variables I'm going to just leave for now. So actually I'm just going to add in the file name for right now and I'll add on the other variables as we create the, uh, the different uh, dialogue options within there. So what I'm going to just do is I'm just going to do s file name as string. Uh, usually when I'm defining variables I've sort of gotten the habit that I'll use the first character here to indicate what type of uh, variable it is. So S for be string, I be integer, L be long, D be double, and so on. Uh, just makes it a bit easier for me to know, you know, when I'm looking at the variable, I know exactly what it is without actually having to go find where it was defined. And also I'm going to add in another one, is I'm going to add in a Boolean. And I like to use this because this allows me, if the user selects the uh, cancel button or anything like that, that instead of the script still running through, I can go in and see if they've, they've actually done the cancel button and go in and uh, allow the script to, uh, to exit gracefully uh, without getting any errors. So I'm just going to stick with these two variables for right now. Next thing I want to do... So let's just go in and create the dialogue first. So here I'm going to create my basic dialogue and I'll move this around. I'll make it kind of larger. I'm going to have to go play with this off and on to sort of see how it is. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep this very basic for this video here. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and change the properties. So the properties, I've got the name and the title. So the title is what shows up in the upper left-hand corner. So I'm going to go change that, and I'm going to change that to Dialog Demo. Now the name, now this is the name, this is what the, uh, how you uh, associate the script to access the dialog. So you can just leave it as is, or I'm going to just change this and call it dialog demo. So then when I'm going to be referencing this, and you'll notice that this will change to dialog demo when I did that. We got the position left with top height, so we can go change these. And these, as we're going to be adding stuff, we're going to be adjusting these. And finally, I'm going to uh, give the function a name. We'll just call it display it. And I'm just using display it because if you go in and look at the uh, the browser, or the language browser with an idea, and it's talking about any of the dialogue functions, it uses display it as the, uh, in all the, the different examples. So I'm just going to keep that to make it easy. But it could be any function name. It doesn't have to be display it. 
Uh, one thing that I have found out is that when we're doing the left and the top, the left and the top, if idea is open and you run this, is associated with uh, the location of idea. So this is the left and the top position from the upper left hand corner of idea. If idea is minimized, then it will go into the uh, upper corner of your Windows uh, screen. So I'm going to dialog demo and I'm just going to add in the two buttons. I'm going to add in the OK button and I'm going to add in the cancel button. And that's what I'm just going to add in for now. And I'm just going to save this. And I'll just call this dialog demo part one. Okay, so I've set up the basic dialog. So now I want to access it. So I could do it from the main, but usually for the main, I just like to keep this as sort of the control. So the main is whenever you start an idea script, uh, it'll always start running uh, the code within the sub main. Uh, so I like to really keep this just for linking to different functions. I don't actually like to, to use it to actually have code in there or a very basic code in there. Usually it's maybe just if definite statements and stuff like that. So I'm going to call this. So I'm going to actually just create a new function. And I'm going to call this menu. And then I'm going to define the dialog. So I can just call dim dlg as dialog demo. So I'm creating a variable called dlg that holds the contents of the, uh, the window, the dialog. Other variable I need is I need an integer. So I'll just go button as integer. And that's, I'm just following what is usually done in the documentation. The reason I have an integer here is when you click on a button, uh, within the dialog, each button has a different number value, be it like one, two, three, four, five. And this is returned to the variable that calls it. So to call the dialog, I'll just say button equals dialog. So there's a function called dialog. And then I just put DLG. So now, whenever it gets to this line, it will open up this dialog and then whichever button I select, it will return a numeric value. So I'm just going to do a message box so you can see this. So we go run that. Sorry, I just realized I have to actually call this function. So I'm just going to call menu. That will work a bit better. There we go. And you notice how when it's opened, it's opening in relationship to the upper left hand corner of the idea. So right now we only have the OK and Cancel button. So if I click on Cancel, it gives me a zero. So Cancels are always zero. And if I go click on here and I click on OK, it's going to return a minus one. So then I can actually go check for stuff like that. You know, I can also check if button equals zero, then B exit script equals true. So what I'm doing here is the button will return zero if I click the cancel. But if I collect, select the X in the upper corner, I'm not actually creating a button. So let's go see what happens there. So I'll click on that. Oops, and I got rid of the message box. Let's go put that back in. that also returns zero. So that way I capture the information that if I hit the upper box, the, the X box to uh, exit instead of the cancel button, I'm testing for that here. I know I want to exit the script. Next thing I want to show you is when I created this dialog, I gave it the function display it. So let's go in and I'm going to create this function. And then I'm going to talk about the parameters in here. So I'm just going to go function, oops, display it. And this actually contains three different, uh, three different variables. So, so it returns the control ID, it, control, it returns the action, and it returns a supplementary value. And let's go talk about these. So what I'm going to just do is I'm going to pull up some slides. Like I said, this presentation is based on a presentation I did at the uh, 
Idea Users Conference in Denver this year. So I'm just going to pull up some of those slides to be able to explain more to you what these three different the variables do because I have different slides for that. Okay, so here I'm talking about accessing the dialog function. So if you remember, there was a there was one of the items was called the action with the percentage. So if you don't know, percentages mean that it is an integer. So it's instead of saying action as integer, I can do action percentage as integer, and the dollar sign is a string. So when you open up a dialog, there's four different values that the action variable can hold. And this, and the number one is indicates the dialog has just loaded. So if you are just loading in the dialog for the first time, action number one will show up. So the action variable will return a one. If you click on an item, within the dialog, then it will return number two. So this is great. If you go in and click on anything, you can go in and test, and using the other controls, you can go see what was clicked, and then based on that, you do something else. Action three, uh, that means that there has been text has been entered into an edit box, and action four means there's been a change of focus. So generally, in most not dialogues, I'd say like 95, probably, plus percent, you're probably looking at action one and two, because generally you want to do something. So maybe you want to set some kind of parameters or some uh, basic, uh, basic values or whatever when the dialog opens. And then you want to probably make some changes within the dialog when you go select different options. The next variable is the control ID. So this is a string. So this returns the name of the control that received the action, such as the name of the button. So we're going to see as we're creating the different items within the dialog, we're going to be giving them IDs. So this will be what we can return. So by using a combination of these two, so say, okay, an item has been clicked. Then we could go look at what item has been clicked. So if you clicked on a different button, it you could end up doing different other types of info. Uh, you could do uh, different other types of things with that button, and that's ultimately what the dialog will be showing you how to do in the dialog. And the third value is the supplementary value. So this is a supplemental value that further describes a particular action. So depending on where you are. It returns the item selected in a list box, so return whether you selected item 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or so on. It indicates if a checks box is selected. Uh, it indicates if a button that has been selected. And it also indicates the length of test that has been entered in a text box. So by using these three different variables, you can gain fairly good control of your dialog. These are the dialog functions, and we're going to be using several of these in creating our dialog. So I'm just going to walk you through the different ones. So dialog enable. So this enables or disables a particular control in a dialog. So you can have a dialog, any control within the dialog, either grayed out or not. Focus, so you can put a focus, so this is great if you're opening a, a dialog for your first time and maybe you want to give the focus on a certain edit box or something where the person will be automatically entering in information. A dialog list box array, this allows you to to fill in a comma, combo box, list box, a drop list box with the data from an array. And in this uh, video, we'll be showing, an ex or in this series of videos, we'll be having one video on how to do this. We got one here that allows you to set a picture. So it fills a picture control with a specified picture. Uh, IDEA only supports a bitmap picture format such as BMP, the old bitmap format. Uh, so I rarely use these just because it's not that easy to use. A dialog text sets or changes the text of a dialog control. I'll be using this in this series of videos. A dialog value changes the numeric value of a checkbox control such as a checkbox. Uh, when working with a checkbox, zero selects a checkbox, zero clears the checkbox, and minus one fills the checkbox with gray. So here we can go in and control the checkboxes using the, uh, the dialog value. And finally we got one called dialog visible that allows you to hide or make a, vis uh, make a dialog uh, control uh, visible or invisible, depending on how it's selected. So you can have different types of controls 
uh, available depending on the selections of the users. So I'm just going to get out of this and we're going to go back here. So now we've set up our dialog. We know what the control ID, action, and supplement value is. Another variable I usually will set up is dim the exit menu, sorry. Because what I want is I want to keep my dialog open uh, until the user either selects OK or cancel. And I'm going to be showing you probably in the next video how to do that. And in order to do that, I need this variable here. And then I'm going to set up the, the basic structure. So I usually use the select case. And I'm going to use the action. So I'll add on my end select. Then do case one, case two. So what this does is whenever I open the dialog for the first time, I'm going to run whatever codes in this area. If a person clicks anywhere in the, the dialog, I'll run this code here. So here we can say an example is, then I'll usually use another select case, and I'll use that for the control ID. So this allows me to then decide on what I want to do. So two examples we'd always have is we'd probably, we would have case for the OK button and a case for the cancel button. And that'd be our basic items. So I'm going to show you in the next video how to set these up and keep the, the items open. And you notice the OK button and the cancel button. If we go back to dialog demo, if I click on the OK button, here's my ID. So that is the same thing. And for the cancel, cancel button one, cancel button one. So this is how I would know. So I would click on this button, that would give it an action number two. Then I'd go see which button I have selected. So I'm just going to save this and I'll leave it for now. Um, so this is the basics and uh, in the next video I shall show you how to uh, keep your dialogue demo open no matter what. Okay, thanks. See you in the next video.